Good evening. And Merry Christmas. What a joy and a privilege to be able to share this wonderful evening with you. And if you are visiting with us this evening, if this is your first time, well, welcome to Church of the Redeemer. Uh, we are so happy to have you with us, and we'd love to get to know you. So please click on the Contact Redeemer on our, uh, the Contact Redeemer button at the bottom of our homepage, which is redeemer cincyorg That's redeemer cincy with a Y, dot org. And tell us about yourself. If you would like to use a bulletin to follow along with the worship service, you will find a link to, to one of those bulletins at redeemer uh, cincyorg slash Christmas dash 2020, 2020, okay? redeemer cincyorg slash Christmas dash 2020. Links can also be found in the comments section on Facebook and on YouTube. On behalf of all of our clergy and staff and of all the people of Church of the Redeemer, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a joyful New Year. Let's begin our worship with the first three verses of O Come, All Ye Faithful.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God and glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night, they shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones. Lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the earth, say to daughter Zion, see, your salvation comes. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called sought out, a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. When the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. Not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy. Through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them, and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of our Lord. God, grant us serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, again, Merry Christmas. I'm going to keep saying Merry Christmas, and I, I am so excited to be with you, and I got to, let's just get this right out of the gates. This is not how we want to do Christmas. This was not our intention, of course. We want to be together. We want to be in the same space. We want to sing the same songs loudly. We want to see the, the space filled with green and see everyone dressed to the nines and, and feel that energy and, and that warmth. And, and of course, we're, we're watching this from our homes and, and, and we're experiencing it completely differently. So look, we know that's the case. We know that's the case. And there's that part of us that just wishes things were a little bit differently. So look, I'm not going to ask you to pretend that's not, that that's not true. We're not going to try to close our eyes and pretend that this is something other than what it is. I don't believe Christmas is actually about closing your eyes and pretending that something is perfect when it's not. But before I get to what I think about Christmas, before I even get to the story that we have here, oh, I have a Christmas story for you. You have to hear this. So I'm on a Zoom call, because of course I am. It's 2020. Where else would I be? I'm on a Zoom call with a parishioner just last week. And as you might imagine, I haven't seen them in a while. Some of you I get to see pretty regularly on Zoom. 
And others, you know, we're all doing our own thing and trying to figure out how to stay connected and really just how to get by this year, right? And so I'm checking in with this person I haven't seen in a while, and their story, their story is, is one of those stories that I, I've been wondering about them because this time last year, this family that's a part of this church, they had made the decision to go into the hotel business. And this time last year, they were getting their hotel and everything all set up for the new year. And they started, like, opening up proper their hotel business at the beginning of 2020. These poor, poor people. As you can imagine, their story of what they thought that would look like and what actually happened were two radically different things. And I have to tell you, when I was talking to my friend about this, when I was talking to her about, about what this was like, I was genuinely, I want to be honest, I was expecting her to tell me basically the saddest, most painful story imaginable. I was expecting to hear about how difficult and impossible this year has been for them. I, I wasn't expecting that because I'm trying to be cynical or, or jaded. I just... It's been a tough year, and you're starting your hotel business at, at the beginning of 2020. How else could the story go? And so she starts off that way, telling me about some of the management issues they had right out of the gates and the people they were working with, it wasn't working out. And then, of course, there was this shutdown, and you're going, yep, this is what I, this is, ugh, it is, it is awful. It is, it is peak 2020. It's on brand. And then she tells me about how in the midst of this shutdown and in the midst of of not being able to, to get things going the way they had hoped, they found the opportunity to partner with the St. Vincent de Paul organization closest to their hotel. And within weeks, their hotel was filled to 80% capacity with people who had been experiencing homelessness. And for the bulk of 2020, while many of us we're sitting around uh, and, and, and trying just to, to as, the, as, the, as the Christmas carol goes, muddle through somehow. Our friends, my friends, their lives were being transformed by God as they served the people who were in their hotel and created new life and new opportunity, participated with God in the transformation of life, in the saving and reconciling and recovering and tears flowed of joy as I heard this story. And I thought, there it is. There's Jesus. There he is. Did this year in any way, shape, or form go as they had planned? Of course not. Was Jesus radically, powerfully present in their lives and in the lives of everyone around them. Yes, my friends, yes. You and I, when it comes to Christmas, we all get a little sick in the head because we get obsessed with the idea of Christmas being something more than we get overcome with the possibility of experiencing the, the radical presence of Jesus Christ as he comes to save us all, we get obsessed with making sure that we hear the right song and smell the right smell and get the right flavored latte and wear the right sweater. And all kidding aside... We genuinely look forward to the sights and sounds and smells. And even though normally on any other year, we'd be stressing and anxious over who we were going to see and when we were going to see them and would it all go well and would the meals be cooked perfectly. If you're anything like me, you're grieving this year, not getting to smell those smells and see those things and experience the normal anxiety of getting to be around people that you see every Christmas. I get that. The story of Jesus on Christmas is not the story of the God who shows up to an ideal situation 
to a people who have gotten it just right and are super psyched and ready for everything to be Christmassy. Jesus shows up in this space. And if you, if you pay attention to the story, we even, man, we even tell the story in this way where it's sort of like, when you picture it, Mary and Joseph in this quiet little stable out somewhere remotely being not bothered, even though there's, there's donkeys and cows, but you know, they're appropriately quiet. And we sing songs, as Melanie pointed out a couple weeks ago in her sermon about a silent birth and a quiet baby. I don't buy it. But when you actually pay attention to the story that Gary read so beautifully tonight, when you pay attention to the story, they go to this place because everyone has to go. Everyone who's of the line of David has to show up in Bethlehem. That's a lot of people. And guess what? It's packed. It's so packed out. It's so full that they have nowhere to go. And so when they're sleeping in this stable, they're not out in the middle of nowhere. It's like on the, it's right on the like outside. It's basically like being in someone's garage. There are people all around them. And you can imagine with people all around them, people everywhere. If you look at the cover of the bulletin, there's this, it's, it's beautifully claustrophobic. That's what it's like. They are surrounded by noise and inconvenience, and then a birth happens. This is not how births are supposed to go. This is not how the story is supposed to go. And then these shepherds, this is not how their night is supposed to go. Everything is interrupted, and everything is is interrupted by the grace of God. This is an interrupting grace that transforms the lives of the people who are present in our story. This is not a story about the people who earned the right kind of Christmas. This is not the story of the people who got it just right so Jesus would come. There's nothing idealistic about it. Now it's too true of a story to fit into that mold. Tonight, I'm filled with joy. Not because we're all together. I know we're not. I'm not the way we want to be. Not because everything's perfect. Very little is perfect in all of it. It really feels that way, doesn't it? but I am filled with joy because I am aware of the fact that even even when things are not the way we want them to be, Jesus is present, is alive to us, born to us once again, working among us to bring us into deeper love of the world around us, deeper connection with our neighbor, and a deeper understanding of our fundamental belonging to the God who made us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I love you. And I love this church. And yeah, I wish it could be different this year. And also it's not. It's like this. And this is where we find Jesus not somewhere else, not on a different Christmas, not on a different day, not in an imagined idealized place, right here in our decision to find ways to recognize our connection and to hold fast to our community in Jesus' name, to find ways to transform this world and to be transformed by God. In that space, Jesus is radically present, born anew, giving us a life eternal. And so on this day, I thank God for Christmas. And I thank God for you. And I have absolutely no idea what 2021 will look like. And don't try to make me guess. But I know whatever it brings, Jesus will be with us in it.
Please join me in professing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, you dwell with us in the darkness and the light of our lives. Give us grace to call out to you with devotion and praise as we pray for the church and for the world, saying, Emmanuel, hear our prayer. May the radiance of the star that shone brightly over Bethlehem illuminate our nation, filling it with light and peace. Emmanuel, hear our prayer. May people in all of the world find refuge and love in times of danger and fear. And may the church be awakened to the human needs of our present time. Emmanuel, hear our prayer. As the Magi came bearing gifts, may we this Christmas gift our local community with the gold of charity, the myrrh of kindness, and the incense of prayer. Emmanuel, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our parish family who are sick or distressed, especially Barbara Timmerman, Vian Rither, Jackie Browning, Bob Gerwin, and for all those afflicted by the coronavirus. We pray for all who suffer, especially the homeless, the hungry, and those in prison. To these, our siblings, may our hearts be a manger of welcome and our hands a cradle of joy. Emmanuel, hear our prayer. May the blessed hope of everlasting life be the truth of those whom we have known and loved but see no longer. Emmanuel, hear our prayer. We adore you, ever-present God, and we bless you. Because by the holy birth of Christ, you give hope to all the world. May our prayers become living words, inspired by the word who lives in us always, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So Oh. <laughs> 
Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we, who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you.